Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one, open the breeding pool, nice for constructed, not as useful in drafts, still fine, but it's kind of funny how maybe a Simic Guild Gate would be better given all the gate synergies. What do we have? Had in common, we've got Infiltrator, which is kind of medium. Reclamation can be okay in some of the adapt decks, but I don't rate it too highly. And then Consecrate as a nice, well, consume mostly for a, a nice removal spell. And looking at the commons, I love me a Blade Juggler, Inheritance is decent. And then we've got a Thrall as a standout card. So lots of Orzhov flavored cards here between the Consecrate Consume, Thrall, Juggler and Inheritance. Juggler and Inheritance being single color makes them a bit more flexible, even though Consume and Thrall might be a little bit higher on power level. So could see going either way here. Inheritance is also a card that we've often found uh, tabling or just going late, since the bots don't seem to appreciate it as much as players that might have changed with the recent update. But uh, I think we've si still seen Inheritance go pretty late. So that's also something to keep in mind. I guess we'll take the removal spell here. Still have lots of good Orzhov flavored cards. Final payment's great, Inheritance is great. I think those are both better than clear the stage. And then there's Bring to Trial, which as a one-off is fine in the main deck. Not playing any sideboarded games this time, so a single Bring to Trial is usually what we're looking at. I think it makes sense to go for the final payment here, just as a flexible removal spell. Can pick up some more afterlife creatures to go alongside it. And then hope that uh, one of the two inheritances wheels, since we would like to have one of those. Alright, well, <laughs> definitely pick the right guild. This pack is stacked. Thrill and Oligarch I think are better than Guild Mage, although Guild Mage is still totally fine. Plague White's great, um, and then there's some other filler cards like Grudian and Imp, which would still make the deck, and then the Vampire as well. So yeah, I think here it's between Thrall and Oligarch, and I think I'm leaning Thrall. Like, Oligarch has a bit more synergy with Payment, do want to make sure to end up with enough cheap cards. Like, Oligarch is kind of somewhat replaceable with Plague White in the 2-drop slot. Grasping Thrall has a more unique effect. So yeah, I think we'll take Thrall and then hope to wheel something, like we're pretty likely to wheel something playable out of this pack since the black and white cards are so deep. And alright, can choose between a Summary Judgment and a Forbidding Spirit, both quite good, otherwise there's a Grudian, which is fine, but pretty replaceable. I think we go with the Judgment here, just a nice cheap removal spell. Double white on the Spirit can sometimes be a bit difficult. Uh, the effect is nice, especially in a racing situation, but uh, Judgment's just a bit more flexible. Well, this is a pretty good start to a draft. Three removal spells and a, a Grasping Thrall, all in the same colors. And Black-White seems to be wide open, so I like where this is headed. Alright, what did we open? Gate Colossus, quite strong. Of course, we're in Black-White, so don't get to take advantage of Gate Colossus, as well as in maybe a Teamer color combination, where we have more Gate Synergies. Uh, otherwise we're looking at maybe a Senate Griffin, double white. It's still totally castable. 3-2 Flyer Scry 1 is nice. Gate Colossus is the more speculative pick, hoping that we can pick up some gates, since I don't want to be paying 8 mana for Gate Colossus. Otherwise, uh, we can take a Senate Griffin as kind of the safer pick that's going to make our deck 90% of the time at least. How many gates would we need before we want to play Gate Colossus if we're just straight up black-white and don't want to play any off-color gates? Probably like three or four at least. So we do need to pick up quite a few gates if we want to make Gate Colossus work. We do also have the Angel at six mana, that's true. Which is another payoff card for gates. I think I'm gonna go with the Griffin. There's a Locket, which we sometimes want since the curve can get pretty high in Orzhov. Especially when we need 6 mana to sacrifice Inheritance reliably. Portal haven't found to be great. Zeal's just a nice trick. And there's Blade Brand, which can have some uh, neat synergies as well, although 
usually a bit better in Rakdos where you have Footlight Fiend. Although technically speaking we could also have Footlight Fiend in Black White. And we're not playing sideboarded games, whereas Bladebrand can be a very nice sideboard card against the green decks. But since we're playing best of one, I think the value of Bladebrand goes down a little bit, since we're less likely to have it in the main deck. So I think we'll go with the Lockets. Seventh pick, this one's a little disappointing. Probably more likely to end up with a veteran in the deck than a watchful giant. Don't want Embrace, so we'll take a veteran. That's an eighth pick Blade Juggler. Knight is nice because it's in our colors, but we're unlikely to really want Knight in our main deck. Blade Juggler is just great, although we do need to make sure we pick up enough two drops to enable Spectacle, since right now our deck is mostly removal spells. So not the best recipe for enabling Spectacle. But yeah, we'll take a Blade Juggler. And Wield Inheritance. And another one. Alright, so we did it. And did not wheel Oligarch or Guild Mage, but we did wheel Plague White, which is still perfect. So we got pretty much all the cards we wanted. Carry an Imp too. And a Blade Brand. Alright, well... <laughs> Pretty decent start to a draft. And what about a Kaya's Wrath? Alright, I guess uh, I guess we'll go for it. Nice on-color sweeper effect. And then hope to wheel... Like we're unlikely to main deck exposed to daylight. Might play a single consign or a Knight of Sorrows. Or a Guild Gate. Well, this deck is definitely not lacking removal, that's for sure. Can take another Thrall, can take another Blade Juggler. I think I like another Thrall here. Like, our deck's not great at en enabling Spectacle to begin with. So if they're both costing 5, I think we're more into the Thrall. Do want to keep an eye on our curve. Wow. Nice spell haunts. Do want to make sure to pick up some Guild Gates here, since we do have all these double white, double black casting costs, so without any guild gates, these cards could be tricky to cast. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely prioritize Ors of Guild Gate highly now. We already have a locket that can help there as well. Taking a quick look at our curve, bit high on the 4 drops, don't have to play the imp. Veteran's very cuttable, don't think we'll need blade brand. This is more of a 4 drop too. So a lot of uh, removal, blade juggler, for now I'm still putting in the 5-drop slot until we pick up more 2-drops. So we do want to try and lower the curve a bit, although Trumpeter is not the type of card we want. Zeal is pretty bad in this deck since we're mostly removal spells and have very few creatures. With that being said, has Officers, not more exciting. But I think I'll still take the Officer here in case we end up low on creatures. Can take a third Thrall. Can take a third Inheritance, or can take a first Sky Tether. Sky Tether can be a little awkward alongside Consecrate Consume, since if we're already enchanting the largest creature, then they can just sacrifice it. So I think we're in the market for another Thrall. <laughs> this could have been the fourth Inheritance, just as a side note. Inheritance does enable Spectacle nicely, so on turn 5 we can play a, like a Spectacle Juggler alongside a 2-drop. There's also Ors of Guildgate and a Twilight Panther. So a lot of good cards. We might just have to be disciplined and take the Guildgate to improve our mana. Just need to make sure our curve looks reasonable and we don't end up with a million 4-drops in our hands that we can't cast. I think that means taking Guildgate or Panther. And I think I'm leaning Guild Gates. Like, we're not going to be short on playables. We're only halfway pack 2, and we're already at 17 cards. So I think improving our mana base is going to be worth it. Cry of the Carnarium. So we can have a Cry alongside a Kaya's Wrath. Can take a Messenger, although again the 4 drops are pretty stacked already. Or another Guild Gate. So I think this is between Guild Gate and Cry. I guess Fiend is also a consideration, just as an early play. But I think I might still take the Guild Gate over it. Yeah, let's just take a Guild Gate. 
and now I could see taking Locket, I could see taking a Vampire. I guess we'll go with a Vampire. And another Guildgate wield. Not bad. I think we'll take it over Consign. Well, Gate Colossus might have been good in this deck, but I don't think we're complaining. And uh, I guess we'll take a 2-drop just in case. I think I'll take a speculative guild gate here. Don't think this is a, a zeal deck. Wow, wield a panther, great. Well, we could build like a 60 card deck with this draft almost. What else do we have besides Awaken the Erstwhile? We have Spirit of the Spires as another 4 drop. I think I'm liking the Orator more, just as a 2 drop. That can be, gain a bit of life back. I like our four drops are pretty stacked already. Consecrate, Griffin, Bellhaunt and Double Inheritance are all cards we're realistically gonna cast on turn four. So probably don't want too many of those. Whereas we have very few two drops. <laughs> wow. Man, just all the ores of packs. Mortify, Thrall, another Oligarch, Inheritance. So here it's between Mortify and uh, Oligarch. And it's probably just a Mortify. Can't really pass up on quality removal like that. Hope to wheel Oligarch. Although I'm not counting on it. Alright, I guess this is a pretty easy Syndicate Guild Mage, nothing else. <laughs> wow. Ors of Enforcer. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, this draft is pretty messed up. All we're missing is a Seraph of the Scales. And I think we're taking the Plague White now. What about a Vindictive Vampire? Don't think it's going to be amazing in this deck. All right, let's take a look here. Caracal is out. So we did pick up some more 2-drops, which is nice. Officer can go, Veteran can go. Grudian's also cuttable. Wouldn't mind some more three drops. I guess juggler is more realistically a three drop now with all the extra two drops we picked up. All right, so we're looking good. Three guild gates, so we've got twenty-two playables. So need one or two more. Uh, I guess a consign could be okay now. I don't think we mind another ores of locket, since we kind of have a gap at three a little bit. And this can ramp us into Thrall, can draw us more cards, maybe we can even get away with a double lock at 16 lands, although we'll, we'll see. Could be a bit greedy. Transport's fine too, but I'm kind of liking Locket in this deck. I guess we'll have to do kind of a, a count to see how many threats we have, how many win cons, but I mean we have double inheritance, triple Thrall, so those are kind of our major win conditions. So I don't think we really need a transport. And Locket into Thrall is a pretty nice sequence. Fixes our mana for Haunt and uh, Wrath. And then can just be sacrificed to draw more cards. We've got so much removal that drawing extra cards with Locket, even though it's slow, is often still gonna come to fruition. And then there's Footlight Fiend, which is just an early creature that can trade off. But we're not playing sideboarded games, and I doubt we'll main deck Fiend when we have now picked up a decent amount of 2-drops. That can do a similar job while also pressuring more uh, consistently. So I think we'll go with Locket here. All right, so I don't mind a Watchdog. Early blocker can play it for one mana off a Locket, so we can go turn three Locket into Watchdog if we drew it later. And uh, can protect our Thralls from removal. Not taking anything here. I guess Portal can be cute with Thrall, but I doubt we'll play it. And we wield both Inheritance and Racketeers. Would have loved uh, an Oligarch in this deck, of course, but can't have it all. Right now we've got 28 cards, minus 3 lands, 25, so we'll have to make some cuts. Could also play 16 lands with Double Locket, in which case we do need to make one fewer cut. Racketeers is another 5-drop, so plays well with Locket into... 
5 drop. I guess I don't mind Racketeers as an extra creature. Like, I imagine if we're up against a big green deck, for example, and we don't draw the removal spells we need, then an extra Inheritance is not necessarily going to help us, whereas Racketeers can give us quite a few chum blockers while we try and drain them out with the Inheritance we already have, or some of the Flyers can maybe kill them, whereas another Inheritance might not be helpful. Alright. I guess we'll take an uncommon for the vault, I already have a Dead Revels. <laughs> well... We got pretty much rewarded for every pick we've made so far. <laughs> Transport on the wheel. <laughs> sure. Well, apart from maybe one or two oligarchs, we pretty much got all the ores of cards we possibly could have wanted in this deck. So how do we how do we build this? Like the tricky part about having an insane draft is that now you have more playables than you have room in your deck. So we are faced with the difficult task of having to make some cuts here to get our deck down to 40 cards. First question, double lock at 16 lands, single lock at 16 lands, or no lock at 17 lands. I think we're definitely playing one lock at. So that leaves one lock at 16 lands or two lock at 16 lands as the options. Looks like we're going to be playing two lock at, so two lock at 16 lands. I think that's fine. Uh, we have to make four more cuts, so that would leave these cards out. All right, I think this is reasonable. So let's take a look at our deck. We've got double locket, 16 lands, decent amount of one and two drops. Grudian has another defensive creature. Juggler that we can enable thanks to Spectacle pretty reliably. And then Flyers and Inheritances to close out the game. And uh, Triple Guild Gate should help smooth out the mana base as well. And our picture shall be, I guess, Kaya's Wrath. Seems good. Lots of 2-drops we can play, 3rd land gives us Locket into Thrill potentially. Yeah, all we're missing is a, an Absolution, I guess. So which 2-drop to lead with is an interesting question. Like, we're unlikely to activate the Guild Mage anytime soon. Uh, so I think we'll play the Orator first. Beats down a bit harder, we don't really mind if it trades as much. And can gain us a bit of life back. Savant. So I don't know if we want to trade Orator for Savant here. Not the best exchange since our opponent got to scry too. Play Locket for now. And if they attack us and don't have a good blocker for Orator, then we can just play double 2 drop if we miss a land drop and attack back for 2. If they do have a good blocker, then... That's fine, I guess. We'll take two and just gain a two life back right away. With our Grudian, we'll have to be careful of Fairy Duelist, I guess. Two mana, one, two flash. That can give minus two, minus two. Oh, since that can potentially turn off Death Touch. Same with the Enforcer. Opponent does attack. We'll take it. And we'll see if they want to keep up mana for a potential counterspell or if they tap out. All right, Dovin's... Acuity, so information campaign could destroy it with Mortify, although it doesn't seem like the best exchange. I think we'll just play double 2-drop, attack for 2. Looks like our opponent's keeping up either Quench or the Fairy. Uh, getting the Inheritance Quenched would be unfortunate, so we might want to try and make an attack so that we force the issue on a potential Fairy. So we can make sure that the Inheritance resolves. Like, we don't really want to trade Enforcer necessarily. The problem being that the blue-white deck 
is going to rely on their flyers to win the game, and the Enforcer doesn't really block those to begin with. We might be okay just attacking with Enforcer and Orator. Probably don't want to trade Guild Mage, and if they flash in Fairy, that's fine. Could also be a Sentinel's Mark. Or some other combat trick. But we just want to make sure that this Inheritance resolves. If it's a pump spell, we also have the option of Mortify. Alright, Sentinel's Mark. Now I might be interested in Mortifying. Like, the thing is, we'll still have our Enforcer with Death Touch to block the 3-4 Vigilance creature on the following turn. But it is pretty good value to just kill this and get a 2-for-1. Although we won't be able to resolve Inheritance. I think we'll kill it. So it didn't accomplish our goal of resolving inheritance, but we did get a two for one. Still have the thrall to trade for opposing flyers, so I'm not too concerned with spending the mortify there. Yeah, if they had a fairy, they probably would have played that instead of the sentinel's mark. Lands are good draws, most spells we can cast. Has the officer, sure. And no attacks, there's a land. Opponent is yet again keeping up two mana, so still could be a quench. So the only play that plays around quench is play Grudian or activate Guild Mage. I think we'll try and play around quench. Like, we only need one more land before we can play Inheritance and play around quench. If they spend their five mana on just a three drop, that's kind of suspicious. So I think we just either play Grudian here or activate Guild Mage end of turn. I think we'll just activate Guild Mage here. Because Grudian doesn't really add a ton of value to the board, given that Enforcer still trades for Officer. I do see the argument of developing our board. So playing Grudian would have been reasonable too. We're going to be on the, the Life Drain plan between Inheritance, Thrall and Guild Mage, so getting that started soon is also worth a little bit. And it's not like Grudian's going to be attacking into Savant anytime soon, so... Opponent does nothing. Right, did get a land, sadly it's a tap land, so just gonna do the same, nothing changed. And our opponents did nothing with six mana, so if we just keep activating Guild Mage, eventually we'll kill them. So Alright, Skyguard, this is one of the few creatures that really punishes us for using the Mortify earlier, since it has a pretty significant effect on the board. And uh, we can't trade for it with uh, the Thrall. Alright, Bellhound's not bad, but they did tap out, of course, now. So what's our plan? We can get a Bellhound in play, we can get a Thrall in play. I think I like Thrall, just to get that established. And it's a more expensive card. It's easier to sneak Inheritance and Bellhound underneath uh, a Quench. And by playing Thrall, we disincentivize our opponent from attacking with the Skyguard, otherwise we're attacking them back. And we're happy with the board stall, given that we have Inheritance coming up. Given a chance, we would like to get the Officer of the board, so if we pick up Consecrate Consume, we can still kill the Skyguard. Because right now they could just sacrifice the Officer instead. So that's something else to keep in mind. I want to keep Locket in play for as long as we need to play around Quench, once that no longer is an issue. I'll uh, definitely sag the locket to find more action. Alright, this opponent's gonna get in some damage here. They're still keeping up two mana for a quench. So that card's definitely on our radar. Take five. Alright, play juggler's not bad. I think it's just time to get the Inheritance down. Can't quench that one. And then next turn we might go Juggler plus Grudian. Which is pretty efficient. Guild Mage not too effective here. Unless they pump some of their creatures somehow. Alright. 
I guess now we can tap it down. Yeah, I think it's play juggler time. They could have the three mana counter here as well, but we'll find out. Looks like they do. Yeah, fair enough. Ooh, those are some good cards gone. That's okay, we've got a, a third one. And we've got a third thrall as well, so <laughs> our deck's pretty stacked, as it turns out. So I guess we'll tap out for Grudian. Sure. No attacks. Alright, so we can Bell Haunt to get a card out of their hands. Seems okay. We will start draining them with Guild Mage soon here. Right, second Thought Collapse, so they still have a Quench in hand, we suspect. And they milled the third Thrall. Well, milling us could be somewhat effective. The Orator gained us a nice bit of life in the meantime. So yeah, we're, we're just on the drain plan now with Guild Mage. And Inheritance. And next turn we might sack the Locket. Opponent plays out the land. So we're kind of seeing the advantage of Lockets in these board stalls. Turning into more action, whereas a land would have been kind of a blank. Guildgate to draw. So if we sack Lockets, that's four mana. We won't have enough mana to also use Guild Mage. I think I value activating Guild Mage more than sacking Locket right now. Either way, we can do it end of turn since there's not many two drops. We would want to play after sacking Locket anyway. So we can have the flexibility of waiting. Another officer. So we could tap with Guild Mage and then sack Locket. I guess that's pretty mana efficient. Although I doubt they will attack with Officer anyway, but we might as well. Good excuse to sack the Locket. Yeah, we might also want to sandbag some creatures in case of Kaya's Wrath. There we go. But of course Watchdog makes that a bit more complicated. So I think we're just playing a land, activating Guild Mage end of turn. Don't really need to do anything. I wonder what would happen if our opponent gets more aggressive with their Haas officers. Right, they're gonna hang back. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. No real point in playing the Plague White here. We'll just uh, pass a turn here. They're gonna be dead pretty soon to Guild Mage and Inheritance. Consecrate Consume would be decent if they didn't have two has officers in play. But uh, 11 cards remaining, don't think we're afraid of getting milled. So end of turn we can activate Guild Mage and tap and they should be pretty dead. They're holding back Skyguard so we can't attack them back with a Thrall. Which is reasonable when they are behind on life. 
well, Guild Mage is not always good, but in this stalled board it's been pretty strong. So, I guess we're going for it. Don't really have a reason to go for it. Could wait to play around instant speed life gain or whatever, but... There's not much of that going around. Alright, kind of a weird game, but... There we go. I like this hand. This is the type of fan that wouldn't mind drawing infinite removal spells and sweeper effects. The Ors of Mirror, Pitless Pontiff. Um, do we Enforcer or do we set up Judgment? Could also just block with the Watchdog potentially if they don't have a creature. I guess we'll play Enforcer for now. No attacks. Guess we'll play a watchdog. Well, the board is gonna get pretty stalled up pretty quickly with all these death touch creatures, which is exactly where we want to be with double inheritance. Opponent misses a land drop. Yeah, this is not gonna go well for them. Double Inheritance and Thrall is just gonna drain them to death pretty quickly. I think there's an argument for uh, playing Inheritance before the Thrall, in case they're holding a 3 mana removal spells, exiling creature with power 3 or less. Although they might have wanted to use that on the Enforcer already. And now with Double Thrall, I think it makes more sense to just play Double Thrall. Curve out a bit better. Since if they can't kill the Thrall, then it's gonna add up to quite a bit of damage. They've got their own inheritance. Not bad. Probably should have attacked with Enforcer 2 there. Locket into Judgment to Thrall. Fair enough. Yeah, I think I will attack with the Enforcer now. Trade these. Could play Panther or we can keep up Watchdog's ability. I think we keep up Watchdog to potentially save Thrill from another destroy effect. Alright, let's get in there. Ooh, that's a good one. I guess we'll save that with the watchdog. Maybe should have played Locket just to have 6 mana guaranteed for uh, Inheritance. Would have been reasonable too, I guess. Alright, double Inheritance on both sides. If we top deck a land, I'm pretty sure they're just dead. Guild Mage instead. What if we attack with everyone? Then they would also just be dead. So I guess that works. Alright, well...
kind of an awkward hand in that blade juggler is essentially 5 drop, unless we can rip a 2 drop right of the start here. But we get to play turn 2 watchdog, probably turn 3 locket into hopefully turn 4 thrall. Don't think we can mulligan. Like ideally we would draw 2 drop into untapped land so we can play 2 drop on turn 2 and then play locket into watchdog on 3. Caretaker is kind of a strange card because the the Gruul and the Simic decks aren't really interested in an 03 defender. High alert is in uh, a different color combination. Alright, land is good, so next turn we do get to play a Thrall. So getting to see the value of Locket in this deck. Alright, not sure what they're holding. Could be a Scorch Mark. Could be a fight spell, could be a pump spell. Rubble Belt Runner. Could even see just playing the Juggler first, just to trade off for the Runner before we start throwing them. But I think we'll throw them first. since we might be able to spectacle this and play something else in the same turn. Alright, Arynx, that's scary. Makes it into a 4-4. Well, this could be an uphill battle. Mm, I'm still thinking Thrall here. And then we might sack the watchdog, we'll see. Technically we could double block Arynx and just trade a thrill for an Arynx. Would be reasonable, or we can just keep our three turn clock in play. Alright. I guess... Uh, this is happening. They probably should have targeted a different Thrall because now we get a free block with a Thrall that's untapped. So probably a slight misstep from our opponent. I think we're in a position where we can race. Alright, perfect. So now they're dead next turn if they don't have another removal spell. Yeah, opponent's dead on board here. Yeah, we can just sack inheritance too. I think it's faster to just attack here. Alright, well, pretty smooth sailing so far. And our hand looks great. Almost a constructed playable hand. Pretty good against Monorad. Turn 2 Enforcer, turn 3 Mortify, turn 4 Bellhound. Ooh, hello. Hmm, I guess we'll play this first. Alright. Um, guess we'll start by attacking. No real reason to play the locket when we have two four drops in hand. Let's get in there. Opponent's got something in hand, not sure what. 
Scorch Mark on Enforcer would be somewhat annoying since they would exile it. But nope, nothing. Not sure if we're supposed to Bell Haunt or Inheritance first. The discard from Bell Haunt less impactful when they still have five cards in hand. Next turn, if we draw land, we could go lock it into Mortify. I guess we'll Inheritance first. Like our hands got pretty good defensive measures, so getting the damage started with Inheritance as soon as possible seems reasonable. Like with a Mortify and a Bell Haunt, we can put up some pretty good defense. There's a Goblin, that's fine. Happy to trade for Aranx if they give us a chance. Alright, no attacks with Aranx. And another Inheritance. Now I think it's okay to play Bulhan just to have an extra blocker for the Goblin. That way we keep Enforcer to block Aranx. And Bellhound can deal with the Goblin. Right, put on discarded a land. And then making discarding a land is still somewhat relevant if they have a bunch of adapt creatures or expensive seven drops, like the Wrecking Beast. This also requires six mana to be pumped. Griffin's interesting. So we still don't have the land to go lock it into a 3-drop. So I guess we'll just play a 4-drop for now. Griffin, I'm kind of expecting to get killed. Yeah, let's just play another Inheritance. The first one seems to be pretty effective, so a second one's probably fine here. This also goes to show how strong the Ors of Enforcer is being for us, just holding back the opponent's creatures from turn 2. And then we can just sit back and relax while the Inheritance does all the work for us. Yeah, the red-green deck can struggle against Death Touch creatures if they don't have the cheap spot removal in red. Fight spells, not exactly what you want against Death Touch creatures. Right, Watchdog's not bad. So now I can go lock it, play Watchdog and have Watchdog protection up. Or we can play Griffin. I think I like developing my mana here. And just getting a lock it in play, so we can start double spelling more effectively. Like, sure, if our opponent somehow doesn't have anything in hand, then the Griffin might be able to get in some damage. But I suspect that if we play Griffin, it would get killed on sight. And now we establish the Watchdog, so if we play the Griffin next turn, we can maybe protect it as well. And not really under any pressure, if they play something that somehow gets past our board, still have a Mortify. So I'm liking our chances. They haven't cast many spells this game, just a Goblin and a, an Aring, so they must be flooding out pretty badly. I guess now we could go lock it into Juggler, go shields down on Watchdog, I think that's fine. And we might pick up an untapped plant to still let us keep up Watchdog. Alright, Consecrate Consume is not bad. Yeah, whenever you can somehow get to a board stall and you have Inheritance in play, it feels pretty unbeatable. But the games where you don't get to establish a board stall, it can sometimes be too slow. Like, imagine if we didn't have these Death Touch creatures in play and our opponent was pummeling us with a Frenzied Aranx, then Inheritance would not look great in comparison. So yeah, it looks like they're just flooding out pretty badly here. Like, we only have four lands in play, we drew... Very few lands this game, but even if we do draw a few more lands, we can always sack a locket and draw two fresh cards. Whereas our opponents just has all basics. Not every deck wants lockets, like a Rakdos Aggro deck, for example, doesn't have room for them. 
but any more mid-rangey deck with especially if you have a lot of one drops and five drops the locket is gonna shine so we could uh, consume them make them sack erinx go on the beatdown plan don't hit it could also play griffin chill for a turn could probably just kill them by sacking to inheritances i think we'll consume here Yeah, I'm not sure what their hand is. Could just be more lands. I don't think we we want to pull the trigger more to find the goblin here. Seems a little bit uh, unwise to do so. But I will offer the trade. If they go for a combat trick, then mortifying seems more reasonable. Or we could sack the watchdog. Colossus. Alright, now I guess it's fine. So not sure what gets them out of this, like thinking of the best possible top decks they can have. Something like an Ooze or a Hellkite still doesn't really save them. Pump Spell is also not the best against Death Touch. So they might have had this uh, Collision Colossus in hand for quite a while. 10 mana. Well, strange game. Opponent cast a total of 3 spells. And we ended the game at 40 life. So, on to the next one. Hand seems decent. Could be in a bit of trouble if we miss land drops, but Bell Haunt's a pretty good catch up mechanism. And Double Thrall is pretty nice. Alright, lock it, great. So we're guaranteed to cast Bell Haunt. If we draw one more land, we might just play a Thrall before we play a Bell Haunt. Happy to trade Plague White for Orator here. They might have their own Thrall here. Instead Plague White into play juggler all right pretty nice start i think we'll attack and then play bell haunts and hopefully they can kill the bell haunts and uh, we can just ride Inheritance and all the flyers to victory. If they kill the bell haunt, we could be in a bit of trouble. Alright, Thrall is fine. I guess we'll play the Griffin, scry into a land. And keep the Plague White back for now. In case they deal with some of our blockers, don't want to fall too far behind. Happy to trade Griffin for a stroll. So our decks seem pretty similar so far. We'll attack with a Griffin and then play a thrall. They might have something to return creatures from their graveyard, which is why they were happy to trade. Or they just expected us to play a thrall anyway. This seems fine. Plague White's not really doing much for us. 
All right, that was pretty effective. Undersea is embracing all the great cards, so didn't necessarily play around it here. We might be more interested in keeping the Bellhaunt, to be honest, just because it holds back all the ground creatures. We've got another Thrill incoming to pressure them in the air, plus Inheritance. Bellhaunt's pretty important here to hold down the fort. Well, hello there. So now I think we play Inheritance. And we can try and leverage the Skyos Wrath. We'll play a Watchdog, say go. And then the plan is to play Wrath and sack Watchdog to save Bellhaunt in the same turn. Perfect. More creatures, please. All right, well, this is gonna be a blowout. So we can play second inheritance, we can play Plague White plus Grudian, we can play another Thrall. So many options. Thinking Thrall here. That way if we pick up a land we can go inheritance plus Plague White. And that's gonna do it. Well, first time casting Kaya's Wrath. And yeah, would we'll do it again. Uh, on the play, one land locket. So this is a hand that is kind of punished for locket, since we might have been able to keep two lands, but uh, haven't mulliganed much so far. So I think we'll keep a bell haunt. Just need any fourth land, thanks to the guild gate fixing our mana. land would have been nice, but this is fine too. Oh no. So we could cycle Consecrate to hit a land drop, hopefully. Do have two more guild gates in our deck, and if we draw those next turn, that would be pretty disastrous. Or we can keep it as removal spell. Like, if we can hit our land drops, we're gonna be in okay shape, but we might just get aggroed out. So, I think we do cycle this. So, could be in trouble here. Next turn, Belhaunt's a reasonable blocker. Don't really care about the orator too much, so surprised they even bothered. Unless they can present lethal this turn, which I guess they can. Alright. Well, that was uh, definitely unexpected. Alright, this seems like a keeper. Again, kind of seeing Blade Juggler being a little awkward without two drops. 
but uh, on the draw we could draw two drop into lands, we could draw lands and we've got a final payment as removal to keep us alive Locket was a nice draw. Do they have a quench? Maybe, but they decided not to play it there. Don't really have a, a great way to play around quench here, sadly. Just have to run something into it. Alright, I guess now... Now I think I'll play white to set up our juggler next turn. And if they want to spend a 3 mana counter, that's fine by me. But when they're not pressuring us, there's no real reason to play into a quench, since the game's gonna go long. We can afford to play around it. A Renthorn, we can just kill. Alright, so I guess it's time for Thrall. It's a lot easier to sneak a blade juggler with a spectacle underneath any counter spells. Alright, Windstorm Drake, fine trading. Still have a watchdog too, so. And I think we're just sacking watchdog and playing another thrall. Now that her shield's down on Quench anyway. She'll bring us pretty good here. Alright, nice. We get to Juggler plus Plague White or Grudin. They could just play a large green creature next turn. Yeah, I guess we'll Grudian. And then play the land since we might want to sack Lockets. And then still play a 3 drop afterwards. Alright, Spider's a decent blocker. So. Grudian can still attack at least. Might also just want to attack with everyone just to push damage. If they block Thrall, we still get in for 7 damage, although they do have 2 mana up. If they have the Fairy, that would be unfortunate. And I guess they never really had a great opportunity to cash in the Fairy, if they had it. So this one's close. Could see doing nothing, just playing Plague White, sacking Lock at end of turn. Could just attack with Grudian, but that's pretty bad. In case of Fairy, we can't summary judgment because it's not tapped. And the thing is, we want to play Plague White before sacking Locket to play around a potential Quench that they might still have. So I think we'll we'll just wait it out. Like, again, we're not really in a hurry. We're pretty far ahead on board. So I don't feel like we need to run a Grudian into a potential Fairy. And now we'll sacrifice a Locket end of turn. And then we'll reevaluate. Like, if they don't add anything else to the board, we might just be able to attack with everyone and kill them. Alright, opponent does nothing. And inheritance is pretty good, so is mortify. Alright, so how about we do this? Frilled Mystic, fair enough. So now playing inheritance would be bad in case they have a quench. So I think we just chill.
And uh, now we can just ride the inheritance to victory. So... Don't really have to do anything ourselves. Beastmaster could be a little scary, but got a Grudion on defense. And I guess we'll play the land since we have lockets we could draw and sacrifice right away. Our opponent is the one forced to make a move. They might still be sandbagging a fairy that they're going to try and use when we block with a Grudian. Sphinx is not bad. But we can also judgment any of their flyers if we have to. So our opponent has a few more turns here before the inheritance kills him. We still have a lot of good draws left. Got another thrall, two more inheritances, guild mage can all drain them out if there's a board stall. We'll take it and then main phase the judgment in our turn. Skitter eel. That works. Um, can still sacrifice inheritance. So should they be splashing a disenchant with Gateway Plaza somehow? Can still sack in a response. Otherwise it probably wouldn't be worth it to play Orator. Just in case. I guess uh, three more turns of inheritance before they're dead. But we could top deck something that changes the math. At some point we might see an attack with everyone, just to try and force something. But I imagine if they had a fairy, they would have probably used it by now to get an attack in on the ground. Alright, the Mystic's gonna get in there. I guess we're fine blocking with the Plague White. So we did float out quite a bit this game. But we're still doing fine. We've got five lands left in 16, so... Out of those 11 cards, we still have Double Inheritance, Thrall, Guild Mage, Kaya's Wrath... Um, what else? A Locket. Eel gets in there. Could block with Grudian, could double block with Juggler and Plague White, or Orator. Could just take it. I guess I'll block with the Grudian. Make them use the fairy if they have it. Incongruity, that's fine. So they could be dead on the swing back if they don't have anything. Don't know if it's necessary to go for it, because a lot of opponent does have some weird interaction. We don't kill them, then... We could somehow die on the way back, although I guess we have an Enforcer too. Yeah, with the Enforcer draw I think we're fine to attack here. What's the worst that could happen? They didn't have the Fairy, otherwise they would have cast it before on the Death Touch creature, and they would have cast it before blockers here. So they need two removal spells somehow. Yeah, they could have the split card that counters a triggered ability and not our incongruity, sure. I guess there's no real reason for us to sack the inheritance right away. So I guess we can just drain them out with inheritance and if we ever feel the need to sack it, we can sack it. 
So can just wait three turns essentially. I guess we'll find out. Alright, they had a quench. Alright, sweet. So, six and one. Let's see if we can win the last one here. Alright, on the draw. With a two lander, but we have a final payment and a Grudian with a third land. Hybrids, not bad. So we can Panther keep up Death Touch. Although Swamp Forest is not a start you see very often. Golgari not especially a supported archetype. They seem pretty committed to it. So maybe they opened like a Biogenic Ooze and some other Black Bomb Rare. I guess we'll trade. Could also just take it and then Panther trades for Vampire. But I think we're fine just trading Grudium for Vampire next turn. Playing Locket is tempting, but don't really want to have the opponent hit us with a 3 power life linker. And between the final payment and consume we can deal with large green creatures in the future, so it's not like we value the Grudian super highly. Carrion Imp is fine. So land wouldn't be a bad draw, but if we don't draw lands we still get to play Locket. Alright, our hand's pretty strong, a land doesn't really change our play next turn, not our imp. So I could see casting consume here to get rid of one of the two flyers before we play bell haunts, just to make sure we don't take too much damage in the skies. And with a land next turn we can go Bell Haunt plus Final Payment or Guild Mage. Otherwise we're probably casting Bell Haunt before they empty their hand. They're looking at their graveyard, maybe a way to get them back would be pretty effective here. It looks like a Dead Revels with Spectacle. Also explains why they were happy trading the Hybrid and the Vampire early. Yep. Alright, I'm much happier with them replaying hybrid. Judgment's a good draw too. Can deal with a carrion imp. And presumably their unknown card's pretty good here. So they might want to just pump the hybrid next turn. We can just take it and then final payments. Guildmage can also tap down a big hybrid. And they are gonna pump. I think we're just killing both creatures here and then pay five life, that's fine. And then Inheritance as the last card. 
to gain us some life back. Guildmage can tap down anything that's too big. So don't hit our spot. But they do have one good card in hand that we don't know about. That they capped over the imp. Could be a removal spell, could be another threat. Transport. Alright. So the play now is just to tap down the transport. Don't want to deal with a bunch of spirit tokens. Yeah, they might have some big bomb, like uh, an Andres Forerunners, for example. Could definitely make sense. It would explain why they were so happy to play Golgari, despite it not being the best color combination in this draft format. Sure. I think we're getting rid of the Bell Haunts. That's pretty good. It's good too. Alright. Guildmage is kind of on transport duty. They kept the caretaker on top, which might indicate that they need the triple green for the forerunners. Interesting, it's just a mammoth spider. That's beatable. Why did they keep the caretaker on top is a question. Who knows? Spider is going to block any future thralls that we draw. Uh, I guess we're fine trading here. Holy moly. Thanks for the 1000 bits there, Oxy. Appreciate it. Yeah, glad you enjoyed the content. All right, I think it's time to sag the locket and then we can still activate the guild mage. Watchdog's not bad. All right, so right now, Enforcer would trade for Spider, Guild Mage keeps the transport locked down, and we're draining with Inheritance, so we're making steady progress. So it's uh, on the opponent to top deck something. I guess we'll play out the land here. I think we're still forced to keep the transport tamped down with the guild mage because I don't really want to deal with a bunch of uh, spirit tokens unless we draw a flyer first. Then we might switch to a different game plan where we can drain them with guild mage and then just block the flyers with a thrall, for example. All right, vandal's fine. Can just trade with a plague white. Well, we get a free drain with the guild mage now, so that's nice. So yeah, they're splashing red. Not sure what that means. All right, there's a thrall. So do we change game plan now? I mean, we'll play the thrall and we'll see. It's kind of on the opponent. Since all we can do this turn cycle anyways, use a guild mage to tap down the transport. Yeah, it could be that they have the 7 mana enchantments in their deck. That would be pretty good. We're just hoping to draw another copy of Inheritance. A removal spell for the Mammoth Spider would be nice. Yeah, I don't think we're doing anything here. Just play a land and pass. Yeah, the fact that they're splashing red is making me a little bit more nervous because they might have some bomb that we can't deal with. And we don't have the fastest clock at the moment. Alright, secure the critics is reasonable. So do we want to sack the watchdog to save Enforcer? What else is a watchdog saving? Could save a Thrall. That's about the best we have. But the Thrall is pretty irrelevant at the moment. I think we do sack the watchdog. 
Because if her opponent cared about the Thrall, they would have skewered that instead. And since they tapped the Transport to cast Skewer with the Caretaker, we might as well drain them with the Guild Mage. So Guild Mage is tapping down Transport, and we're finally ahead in the damage race. Opponent down to 14, we're up to 17. Ceratox fine. Can double block it with Thralls. Ceratox is pretty nice in that it dodges all the Death Touch creatures like Enforcer and the Grudian. I guess Grudian got exiled. Alright, they want to cycle the card in hand. I'll happily trade with the Plague White. So if we play Locket and Sack it, we can still activate Guild Mage. Alright, they've got their own inheritance, so now we need to draw a second one before we start making progress there. Could trade Death Touch creatures. Don't know if that's really worth it. Don't think so. We'll just take one. Could also tap the Ceratog, but I think we're fine trading Thrall for Ceratog there. I guess I should, should have attacked with Enforcer before... ...playing the Thrall, since we're happy trading Enforcer for Spider since that would unlock our thralls. Alright, let's see you go. We could honestly just trade thrall for transport since thrall just blocks the spirit tokens anyway. So we can free up the guild mage to start draining. Opponent finds mountain. Are they somehow holding a double red card? I'm confused. Uh, we can't tap down the spider with the guild mage, only power 4 or greater. And then we can just drain with the guild mage end of turn instead. Like, do we have enough mana where we can sack inheritance and activate guild mage in the same turn? Uh, six, I guess we can. So if we just use Guild Mage, put them to five. I guess we're one short. All right, so we'll just have to wait one more turn cycle. Maybe should have been draining with a Guild Mage earlier and just traded a Thrall with a Transport anyway. But now it's pretty trivial. All right, let's see what double red card they're holding. Electro Dominance, yeah, that could be one. The uh, Scargon Dragon, who knows? But if they tap too low and can't sack their inheritance, they would just be dead to our inheritances. Ragdos Firewheeler, pretty ambitious splash, but does get to kill the Guild Mage here. And they are tapped out of inheritance, so I think they're dead on board now. Opponent down to 6, drain them for 2, down to 4, sack inheritance, they're dead. Yeah, let's take 1. Uh, 
Alright, sweet. Got to seven wins. Did get uh, crushed by that one Beastmaster plus Bump Spell combination. Well, that was definitely one of the most stacked uh, drafts we've had in a while. Only got to cast Rakaia's Wrath once, but it was a thing of beauty. Got some nice gems. More gems. Well, those would have been useless cards going to the vault before, so pretty happy that those are gems now. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.